Okay, so I hope everybody, you know, um, could practice yesterday's simple uh, stuff like create table, delete table, right? Okay, so uh, before we begin, okay, you have to look at what we call as um, chords rule. Again, I had given some introduction about it. Okay, what is chords rule? have told what it is, right? This is a rule that defines your RDBMS system. Okay? Defines RDBMS system. The database which follows Cort's rule are classified as, you know, RDBMS, right? So if you develop a database, okay, and you want to be called as RDBMS, you have to follow these rules, okay? And he was the first one, okay, that came up. Uh, uh, he was working with IBM then, and he came up with these rules. And uh, he is called as father of RDBMS systems, okay. And which I told you, right, probably eighty percent, or even probably more than that, percent of database that are used today is RDBMS, right? All the top names that you can think of are all RDBMS databases or relational databases, rather. Okay. So rule number one, it says. It's called um, information rule. Okay. And you know, this itself will separate data database from things like text file or word document. Okay. Um, okay. So each uh, data, okay, should be stored in a cell format. Okay. So information needs to be stored in a table format and each cell has to give you one or has to have one unique data. Okay. So let's say I want to know the salary of David. To know the salary of David, there has to be one particular column in the table which will have that unique value. It should not have 10 different things so that I don't know, you know, it gives me 10 different things and I don't know what is the salary in it. Each unique. So you have to go down to the lowest uh, level to get that. You understand what I'm trying to say, right? Now, let's say if that cell, cell has salary plus age plus location, then I'm not getting what I want. Okay, I want only salary. I don't want the location. I don't want his age, right? So, you know, one unique cell, it cell is where your row and column meet, right? Information has to be stored in table format and each cell has to give me one unique data, not more than one, right? Second is called, um, rule two is called guaranteed access. Guaranteed access. Every cell, every information, GYA, right? Every data, every information that we, we spoke about in rule number one, okay? Every uh, data, okay, or I could say every single data, okay, has to, to or, you know, you should have access to it. That right? has to be accessible. Okay, information is there in the table, but you don't know how to access it. You're not able to access it. No. Okay, that's not possible. Okay, every single value has to be, okay, accessible, right? Um, uh, you have that, this is what happens in the Word document, right? You know, you have information in Word document, but you don't know how to access it and, you know, until you have to go through each line by line and access it. No. Every single data has to be accessible. Now, <clears throat> what is the, uh, you know, so, okay, let's let's also see what impact it has. The impact is table format, right? Information stored in table format. What impact this has? Impact this has is each table has a primary key. You know, with primary key, you're able to, access each information, right? Now, if I want, same example, you know, I want to know the salary of David. 
Now there could be multiple David in the database, right? I need to be able to find my David, right? The David I'm interested in. So I need a primary key, okay, which will be unique for the person I'm looking for, right? And then I, I will say, okay, uh, once you're able to find the primary key, then I'm going to say, uh, select salary from employee where uh, ID equal to 1234. Let's assume that 1234 is the ID of David. So primary key gives you access to each in a specific row. Okay, because if you do not have a primary key, very difficult. If you say David, you might end up getting 15, 20 Davids. Now, how, which David is your that you are interested in, right? So here, each guarantee to each cell, okay, guaranteed access to each cell is important. Okay, rule number three. Okay, you can stop me, okay? If you have questions, please stop me. So rule number three is about handling missing values or not available values as null. Handling null values. Okay. Now, what it says is, it should be handled uniformly. Okay. Um, okay, so let me put it in different values. Uniformly for all tables. Okay. Now, what it means is, okay, your data could be missing. Okay. It could even be, let's say, not known. Right. It could even be not applicable. Right. So, in such cases, you would not put a, uh, you will not have a data, right? You will not have a value in a particular cell, right? You don't have a value blank. And that is treated as null. So most of the time when you have in Excel, let's say you have a table and the column and that particular cell is say empty, right? You don't have any value. But when you read it in Power BI or when you read it in a table, it will come as null, okay? Because null has a specific meaning in database system, okay? The way it is handled is different, okay? So that's why blank, Database may not know. They will may not know what is blank, right? So that's why it will replace blank with null. Okay. Now it is up to you to understand why it is null. Okay. It is null because uh, it doesn't, it's not applicable for that data or you don't know it's not available or you had it, but you were, it was wrong. So you removed it, whatever could be the reason. Okay. But the database system has to handle it differently. Okay. Rule number four is more, again, see, these are all also for the designers, right? If you are planning to design your own database system like Oracle, these are the rules you need to follow, right? And uh, as a user, okay, you know that the database you're working with has been designed in this format. If somebody says, I'm, you know, my, uh, let's say you have never worked on SQL Server. And if I tell you SQL Server is a RDMA system, Automatically, you know that these are the things that database will follow, right? So you don't have to worry about where is the database stored? Is it stored in a file format, a table format, or in hierarchy format or network format, right? You know that it's RDMA, so it has to be table format, right? Okay, so rule four talks about online, or I would say active online catalog. Okay. Uh, we, we call it as data dictionary here. Okay. Now, to talk about it, okay, let me open uh, yesterday's. Uh, when we created, right? When we. Okay. See here. You see, select star from sys objects, right? Now, when this this come, this came when we were trying to drop the table, 
right? When we scripted, table has dropped to, so we got this. So sys object is your data dictionary. Okay, this is what it's saying. Now, we, we did not make any entry into sys object. When we created the table, we just said create table. Okay, SQL server made an entry into sys object, sys dot object. It's like DBO, right? DBO is generally for users. Sys is for the system. Okay, internal things will be done by sys. So when you're creating a user or schema, you should not name it as sys. Okay, sys is a name you reserve for the inbuilt or the SQL server thing. So SQL server, okay, added an entry called books in sys.object table. So this is also a table. Okay. Difference is this is a system level table, which we are not supposed to touch. We can read it. We can know. Now you have created multiple. You don't know how many tables you have created. You can do select star from sys object. Okay. It will tell you this, right? So this is called data dictionary and everything like Metadata, okay. Metadata means what? Data about the data, right? Has to be stored in dictionary. So if I need to know how many tables I have created, I need to see the listing uh, list of tables. All these things I'll be able to do from data dictionary. Okay, and um, of course, right? It, it should again data dictionary is also a table. So it should follow all one to three rules that we have. So. Active data dictionary, okay, managed by system, system, okay, um, should have all the information about metadata, right? In a way, it has to store all the it has to do online cataloging okay that's what it means okay active online catalog means it's a catalog where see it's like a menu card right in menu card they don't give you the entire information right if you want to see the entire information you have to order that dish so if you have to see the entire information about book i need to go to book right uh, system sys dot object will not give me okay let me put that also uh, okay sys dot objects in SQL Server. So MSSS. Okay. Now, as I was saying that menu is what menu tells you what all things they have, right? If you want to know the taste and look and feel and you know what are the complex, you have to order the dish, right? So if I to know what are the values in books table, I need to query the book. Did I start recording? Yes. So I need to go and, okay, I need to go to the table, books table to know what information it has. But to know about the table, I don't need to go to books. I may not even know that book uh, table is created. Okay, sys object will tell me, menu will tell me what all, what are the offerings by that restaurant, isn't it? So that's called online um, a catalog, which is online means you can access anytime, just like you access a, it's any data, any table. Okay. Then comes rule number five. Okay. Rule five is called um, uh, sub language rule. Okay. Um, what is the exact term? Okay, it's called comprehensive. Comprehensive um, sub language rule. Okay, it means <clears throat> see, uh, SQL statements, okay, are one liners. Okay, unlike uh, PL SQL, okay, that we use in database itself, but this is like writing multiple lines of code or Python or C, C++, Java. You have option to write multiple lines of code. But here it has, it is all, it's called scripting language. That's why we call it scripting language. Okay. Okay. Um, um, uh, it is all SQL commands. Okay. Are one-liner commands. Okay. So the information uh, has to be stored in such a way. Okay. 
has to be stored in such a way that you should be able to access using a linear command. Okay. So it talks about database language to access data in a linear syntax format. Okay. Now, basically, again, this is not important to work. This is important for the designers of database. This led to SQL language. Okay. The SQL is designed in this way that you are able to access the information in one single. And you can see that the SQL statement can become complex, can run into, you know, tens of lines or 20s, 20 of lines. Okay. Okay. It's still same line, you know, but because you're checking 10 different things, 10 different conditions, it, you know, you, you know, it can be as big as that, but still it is <laughs> one line only. Okay. This is not all. We have few more. Okay. Rule number six. Rule number six says, okay, the information needs to be updatable or editable. You can always update the information. Okay. Um, rule number six, um, I would say updating rule or something like that. Okay. The data, okay, um, needs to be updatable, okay? So you have this crude rule, right? Um, where you do um, update, delete, and do alter. Alter is, okay, so update and delete is about data, okay? Alter is when you are changing the table, right? So yesterday, instead of, um, you know, instead of um, deleting the table and adding a primary key again, we could have used alter command also. Alter command, you can alter the constraints, you can alter the column type, data type of a column. Okay, you can add or delete a column, right? We can do using alter. So alter is uh, to work with table and delete update is to work with data. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so this is more about updating, right? Now, rule seven talks about um, your uh, insert, update, delete. Basically, right? You should be, you should be able to, <clears throat> um, you should be able to um, uh, edit values. And also it talks about foreign key rule. Okay, so that I'll put it uh, implication. Insert, update, delete, available. Now you see, okay. Um, uh, it'll come later where we're talking about information. Okay, each information is has to be accessible. That's what we said, right? Rule number one, each information has to be accessible. And it, uh, you know, uh, uh, we'll see that there's one more rule which says that information need not be or should not be duplicated, right? If you're talking about salary of employees, there should be only one salary column across all the different tables. You cannot have salary column in two different tables, okay? The problem with that is if we have to change the salary, you don't know which all tables to change. You might miss changing a particular table, then the data is inconsistent, right? Data has to be consistent, okay? So rule what rule number seven says is, you should be able to join multiple tables and perform all this, okay? This six is more about table, okay? So it's updating rule is more about table. Or I would say not more, I would just say about table. And this is about database.
okay so um you know so this would employ like you know you should you should be able to perform union intersection as well you know etc okay so you are able to use all these components okay don't worry if you don't know uh, you just need to know that intersection and union is to join two tables okay that's the thing you need to know we, when we get into details of sql program we will talk about it so <clears throat> insert update okay should be able to get you access to just give me a second i'll just be back <laughs> Sorry, I'm back now. I should give some instructions to someone. Okay, so um, I was talking about, okay, so you should be able to, since data, okay, you, has to be stored in different format, okay so you should be able to access data from multiple tables okay and still be able to update and delete right um you have employee table for example okay you have employee table and then you have uh, a dependent table right now let's say this person who is not married okay uh, employee not married and then you know after some time you know he gets married so the information has to be updated in the dependent table so dependent table is different table. It's not part of employee table. But from employee table, you should be able to reach to the dependent table and update the status to married or even add the spouse name. You should be able to do that. Then, then we talk about, okay. Um, physical data independence and rule number nine talks about logical data independence okay what does this mean okay well, this is very similar to what we just discussed okay um data is stored in a physical format in a file format isn't it now the file structure it says is should not be changed. Okay, if you are making any change and moving database from one system to another system, you're taking a backup. Whatever you are doing, that should not impact the stored data. Okay, stored data is independent of which platform you are using, which system you are using. Okay, it should continue to have that you know physical storage. Okay um the database okay needs to be changed only from changed from sorry, from within the database right no other external factor no external factor should or you know, uh, writer can change the stored data, right? You cannot say, okay, you know, uh, moving from this to that, so data will be changed. No, okay. Let's say you have um, a column called uh, platform, okay, and if you have stored, if you have installed the data on Windows, it should have platform as Windows. And now, when you are moving from Windows, you can move data from Windows to Linux. It should change to Linux. No. It it should not change 
automatically or you know by some external sources you have to run update query to change it okay that's what it says similarly the logical uh, de data dependence okay or data independence rather okay um any change in the logical data okay should not impact the application okay so this is talking about the data okay when you talk when you have physical talking about the data here we're talking from application should not not need not should not be impacted by any change in the database okay now see this way when you perform select star okay when you say select star from employee it will give you sometimes you know you have 20 employees it'll give you 20 rows sometimes it might have 100 employees it'll give you 100 rows so that is not a problem problem is sometimes you know you have let's say you start your design of table with uh, 10 columns okay and later you add two more columns possibly using alter we can add two more new columns now when you're using star you will get 10 columns in the first case and let's say you have 10 different variables or you're handling only 10 variables the system is working fine now now you have added two more new columns the application that you have written before would fail because you are you are you are you are taking care of only 10 variables but the query is returning you 12 variables or 12 columns your system is going to fail okay so it says logically okay the data has to be independent even though you are adding so physically you are adding okay and physically you are adding within database so it's fine okay we are not violating rule number 8 but you are violating rule number 9 okay so in that case, okay, when you're writing these applications, you have to keep in mind that things can change in future. Things can change and it does change, right? And that's why in IT industry, we talk about uh, DevOps and, uh, you know, uh, Agile and Scrum because things do change, right? So you, you have to design such a way that even if table deletes, uh, see, if it deletes the column that you are using, then you can't do anything, okay? that that is you know um, that is um, um, you know you are you are using a column that column itself is not there so there is no um, as a developer you can't do anything right that will anyway throw error but if they delete some other column which i'm not using should not impact my code if they add another column that should also not impact my code right so you, so in actual practice we never say select star we always say select column one comma column two comma column three comma column three column four so so that you get you know how many columns you are accessing and you know what you need to do with those columns make sense Yeah, but if we want to see the entire table, we select select star, isn't it? Correct. So rows will not impact your application, right? Uh, okay. okay. So the way we handle row, okay, we can see row is something that will be changed every day, isn't it? Every minute, if yes. you are using. Yes. So you know, so that we are very confident, right? So let's say if you, uh, if you uh, write a code where it is row dependent, immediately your code will fail after one hour. Correct. Mm -hmm. So as a developer, you know that my code is not working, but column is changed very rarely, right? Maybe column might be added after two years. So as a developer, you happily created and probably you, you got promotion and you moved ahead and uh, you know, your junior is facing problem because you wrote a bad code. Mm -hmm. Right. Rule number 10 is about um, data integrity integrity okay or also call it as independent integrity independence okay <clears throat> what it says is data integrity or um, integrity independence i would say 
So data integrity, let's put integrity independence. That is a better word. Okay, what it says is your backend design, okay, should not be influenced by your front-end design. Okay, you have a different team, you have a different, um, you know, team of uh, database architects, database designers, database programmers who will sit together and create a best performing database. Okay, you should not think that, okay, see, I'm displaying 12 different columns in front end. So let's have 12 columns in this table. No, okay. if database says that you need to have only six column in one table and you need to create another table, right? The, the relationship, right? We'll talk about it also. You need to create two different or three different tables. <clears throat> it might mean for you as a UI designer to link or join three different tables, right? As a, as a Power BI design, uh, you know, user, you might have to link three different tables. That is your headache. Okay. You cannot influence the designer to, you cannot influence the designer to design table based on your convenience. The database has to be designed independent of anybody else. Okay. That means database design design is a task in itself. Any other team like your UI, your front-end application and things like that, okay? <clears throat> okay? Now, Let's look at this. Rule 11. Rule 11 is more about uh, uh, um, like, you know, um, uh, location or what you call distribution independence. Okay. The user need not know, okay, or need or should, okay, not know where the data is stored. Okay, what it means is your data can be in different tables. Data can be in different um, schema. Data can be over different location also. Right, you're creating a distributed system where you have uh, one database on your machine, on your server, some part of the database in, let's say, US server. Uh, one in India server is in US server. It doesn't matter to the user. That is the headache of the people who are designing the system, right? How to maintain, how to do that, how to pro provide um, uh, security and all those things is of the people that is designing. For a database user, okay, it should not matter, okay? It need not and it should not matter, okay? So user is not even aware, okay, from where the data is coming. It doesn't matter for the user whether that data is stored in uh, European data center or US data center, right? So that's what we call it as a distribution uh, independence, okay? And um, rule 12, okay, talks about um, this is the last rule, okay? So it talks about um, what we call as subversion rule, non subversion, right? Not subversion, non subversion. Okay, it means access to the lowest level. Now, if I have access, okay, it, it is about access, okay? So if I have access to a table, then I should have access to the, all the 
values of the table. Right? It means that, you know, you can... Um, so, see, if I tell you that you have access to all the database, uh, sorry, all the tables in the database, but what you don't have access to one particular column. No, right? If I say you have access to all the database, that means everything in the database you have access to. If I don't want to give you access, I'll say you don't have access to all the database. I'll give you access only to a particular table. So if you get access to a table, okay, so if you have access to a table, you should be able to access all the records, columns, tuple, right, in that table. So subversion, okay, in that table. Subversion means sub, right? So it's like I give you access to a folder. That means all the files in the folder is you are able to access now, isn't it? So subversion, non-subversion, right? You cannot control sub information. Okay, so that's why let's say if there's a table, okay, and table, uh, employee table will have salary also and various components, right? Let's say it has 20 columns, but you need access to the table, but you don't need access to salary. I need to hide the salary details from you, right? So I cannot give you access to the employee table directly because if I give you access, you will have access to all the row, all the columns and all the rows. Rows doesn't matter because you will have access to all the rows anyway. It's more about columns that we're talking about, okay? Because that's the design thing, okay? So you need to have access to all the columns. So in that case, what we do is we create a view based on the table, okay? And the view, we will access or we will give only certain columns, okay? And I'll give you access to the view, not to the table because of this rule, okay? I cannot design such a way that, you know, if I design a feature, okay, uh, Oracle cannot claim that, oh, we have a feature where you can restrict the control to a column even when you have access to table. Google, uh, Oracle cannot do that because if they do it, they're violating this rule, okay? But there are ways to do, do that, okay? So you have to implement as a view and then you give access to the views, okay? So these are um, uh, CODs important rules. You know, you are not supposed to remember rule by rule, okay? But since you're working in database, you, you need to know who COD is, first of all, okay? You need to know what kind of rule. So if you remember in different order also, it's fine, okay? But they will not ask you to list all the CODs rule. They'll ask you what are some of the CODs rule. So out of 12, if you're able to remember six, seven, eight in any order is also fine. Right? Okay. So now, okay, what is the result of this? Okay. What it means for someone who's working in this, uh, you know, field. Okay. So getting down to design. Now we have seen so far what a tuple is. What is a tuple? column right uh, let's start with table first table tuple record okay you have um a relational instance relation instance it's a um 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 it's a, a group of columns, okay, that gives the relationship, okay? Now, for example, employee table has employee name and employee phone okay what it means in single table if you have it that means they have a one-to-one -one relationship between them
okay and you cannot have duplicate rows and columns okay then you have something called a schema what is schema group of tables and other database object okay you group them and you give it a name right it could be generally it is done for one security purpose so I'll, I'll you know i'll group them i'll put one you know set of table in one schema and i give you access to only schema not to the entire database okay so th that's what you know you're managing security our second way is second purpose is that logically grouping right so I have some data for HR, some for finance, some for operations. So I'll have three different schema, one for HR, one for, you know, finance. So that is easy to manage for me. Okay. I need to know what are the table for HR, uh, which tables HR use. I can go to HR, you know, HR schema and I can get it. Tables can use, uh, see, database, it is not possible for two different database to work together. You, you know you cannot because we see we, we discussed that right database can only be changed from within the database not outside so another database another sql server database is outside of sql server right or the database so i cannot link two different tables okay from two different databases i cannot link two different tables from two different databases i need to have third party tool which will do that per, do that I cannot link directly, but I can link table from two different schema if they're in the same database. You know, it's like, um, you know, your your house, right? So database is like a house and you have different rooms in your house. So schema is like different rooms in a house. So you, you keep a TV in a particular room. You keep, you know, a refrigerator in different room. That's your schema. But you can access, right? When you're watching TV, you can go to fridge, uh, take a juice bottle, you can watch TV, right? But if you're in some different house, you cannot do that that easily, right? So, you know, th th that's the kind of uh, distinction we have in schema and database. Relation key. What is relation key? Okay. Or we simply say key. Okay. We discuss that, right? Set of columns that will uniquely uniquely i hope this is in korea will uniquely identify each row right so for example you know different group set of columns not just one key can be multiple right your employee id together employee id alone can be one then your name and dob column together can form one your phone number okay phone number and name together see phone number can be empty also so if, if there's empty then you can't uh, like you know two phone numbers are empty then you can't uniquely identify each column but phone number and name together very rarely you know you'll have two name and no phone number obviously they'll not have same number but pr problem here with is with <laughs> null values if two columns have null values then which one uh, how do you access in, in that value so you know using name and phone number you can you know so so the step one in terms of identifying which what should be your uh, primary key first step is that we find the keys only okay keys are set of all combinations it could be one two or three or five columns together uh, able to identify each row uniquely okay so these are called keys or candidate we also call them as candidate keys okay okay so yeah and from here it leads to constraints that we discussed about okay um key constraint uh you have um referential integrity constraint referential integrity constraint let me add this referential integrity constraint 
okay this is used to link two different table okay it is used to link two tables okay the, the it's a key it's a column okay it's a column so it's also called as foreign key okay referential it references different table also called as foreign key okay referential means what it is referencing some other table integrity unique okay so it is referencing some other table unique value okay so in current table okay link two tables in current table it's called foreign key and in other table it's called it's it has to be it has to to be a primary okay so classic example is when you talk about employee and department okay so in employee table okay or rather in department table you have um, department id and which is the primary key for the department department will have name department name department head department budget code or whatever and you have department id which uniquely identifies so department id is the primary key now, when you add the employee data, okay, employee has to belong to some department. So you will add one column called department ID in employee ID, in employee table, sorry. In employee table, you will add a column called department ID. Now, this department ID is linked to, is references department table. So this DID, department ID, becomes foreign key in your employee table, okay? It is a primary key, so we are not touching that. It is a primary key in the main table, okay, department table. But in employee table, it becomes a foreign key. So before you add employee, you need to create the department. Logically, also, if you see, it makes sense, right? You can't have an employee without creating a department. It is not. So this is called referential integrity or your foreign key. Okay. Um, so, okay, so this is the theory that we need to know. Of course, you know, uh, later we'll talk about um, um, the different aspect of, um, uh, or let's let's talk about it. Is it okay if we extend for 10 minutes? So that next week when we meet, we can directly continue with building, um, uh, you know, ER diagram. Okay, so no response will continue. Okay, sir. <laughs> <laughs> set theory. Okay, now what is set theory? Anybody wants to talk about set theory? You must have done it before, right? It is part of your relational algebra. We call it as relational algebra, right? Okay, set theory talks about... Okay, so let's first talk about it. See, set only represents values, okay? Now, if I tell you, name five states of um, US. Now, now, when I ask you name five, any five state, it doesn't matter, you know, uh, which state you take, right? Whether it's from East Coast or, you know, West Coast or East Coast, whether it is from north or from south right doesn't matter right any five i asked you or also doesn't matter right so now if somebody gives me you know five states in alphabetical order okay first five or somebody gives me you know last uh, of first five but in reverse order also it means same so set only represents okay um wait so generally we write set like this, right? And whether you give me Arizona, okay, 
here or I put Arizona in a different set here. Okay, doesn't matter, right? Whether you give me Arizona as number one option or number five option, or number three option, doesn't matter to me. Correct? It is as long as it is correct. Okay, now if you give me states from India, that is not considered as here. So that will be here outside, let's say uh, Telangana. It is outside of this set. Set, you have how many? 50, 51 states, right? And out of that, okay, you're giving me five. Right? So set is unordered collection. Order doesn't matter. So same thing when we run the data, when we run a, a SQL query, the rows that you get, that's the data you're getting, right? The order doesn't match. So you should not fall for the order. Okay? First thing is you should not fall for the order. Okay? Because, you know, when I run, I, and if I uh, see some data in row number three, and in your case, it is row number four, doesn't matter as long as we get same information. If you're running same query, we should get same set of uh, rows. Order doesn't matter. That's why set is very close to database design. And we have actually implemented set concept in database. Okay, it has to be there. Okay, so... In set, we have relationship. Okay. So, again, if I take same example, employee and department. Department will be less, right? You might have only five departments. But employee can be many. Now, if you see here, one department can have multiple employees. But employee cannot belong to multiple departments. Okay. So here, one department has many employees. Or many employees have one department. So we call it as many to one. In this case, if you put department on the left, employee on the right, it becomes one to many. Right? So whether it is many to one or one to many doesn't matter. Okay. It, it means the same. So this is the relationship between two sets. Okay, each table is like a set. And uh, do they have, they may not have any relationship. Let's say uh, in our case, books and employee, or sorry, books and member may not have direct relationship, right? But when you start issuing, then you will have relationship with the book, right? So depending upon your rule, you, your, your uh, um, you know, your, uh, set relationship will change for example if i tell okay if i tell you that there is only one unique values okay so each book is unique you do not have multiple book and rule says that one member can take only one book now in this case the relationship will be what one to one one to many many to many in this case relationship will be one to one because one employee can take only one book, right? And one book can only go to one member, right? Not employee, but member, isn't it? Because you have a unique copy. If you have multiple copies, then there will be one, 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 and you know, uh, member two can also take book one. But here you have only one copy of each book, okay? And one, your role says one employee can take only one book at a time. You have to return it to take next book. So in that case, the relationship will become one to one. One to one relationship. One employee can take only one book. One one book can only go to one not employee member, right? So one to one relationship. Second case is when you know uh, you say that one employee can take multiple books. Okay, can take infinite number of books. Okay, many any number of books. It becomes one to many. But sometimes you will say no. Maximum is three, so, or you know anything more than one is many. But we have a restriction, right? In ER diagram, we'll see next next class how to write it on ER diagram. That's why this, this basic is important when we start building the ER diagram. Okay, so you will say one employee can take three books. So one can take three means it can be zero to three, right? As a member, you may not even take a book or you can take three books. So one, two, three. Or you know, two 
two decides to take only one, three may not even take a book. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so in this case, it is one to many. Okay, one, uh, sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah, one person will take many books. Let's say multiple copies of a book. You have five copies of a book. Then obviously, employee, you know, member can take multiple books, right? So in this case, it becomes one to many, sorry, many to many. You know, one employee can take many books. One book can go to many <laughs> members or employees, I'm saying every time. Okay. So when you have multiple copies of book, then the first case holds true. One employee can take, one member can take many books. But now one book can go to multiple members also, isn't it? You have five copies, so five different members can take same book. Right? So depending upon the rule, see, same book and member, we ended up getting all three relationship. One to one, one to many, okay? Or many to one or many to many right if there is many to many from both the direction it becomes many to many okay so these are the three relationship between different tables okay so we'll stop here today uh, <clears throat>